Um, uh, as they introduced me, my name is Maria Cajarel. I did my PhD in Madrid in the group of Manuel Guzman. You may know him because he's a very famous uh, expert in the, in the field of cannabinoids and cancer. So I then was in Cambridge for five years, but now I'm back in Spain with a position to start my new research. So um, I talk today about what we know about the effects of cannabinoids in cancer and how is our hope to move them from the bench, from the laboratory bench to the bedside. So I don't know if you are all familiar with cancer, but cancer is a very complex process which starts with the mutations of some like some cells, and then those cells start to proliferate or divide in a non-controlled manner, and then to be able to grow under beyond a certain size, they have to develop new blood vessels, and eventually they can go to the blood vessels and, and reach other organs, such as brain, lung, or other distal organs where, where they will metastasize, and, and, and actually, very sadly, this is a devastating consequence of the, ca of the cancer because the metastasis will eventually, in most cases, kill the patient. So, tumor progression is associated with oncologic pain, and the drugs that we have currently in the clinic are associated with important side effects. So, we know that cannabinoids can be useful to treat some of those side effects. I mean, there are now two uh, cannabinoid-based drugs which are approved to inhibit the nausea and the vomits associated to the chemotherapy treatment, and those are Marinol, um, which is um, made of capsules of THC, and sesame, which is an, an analog of, or a synthetic analog of THC. And also, we know that uh, Sativex can be useful for the treatment of the oncologic pain, and it's approved in Canada, and it's in, I think it's in phase three clinical trials in other countries. But what I'm going to talk about today is not uh, the use of cannabinoids to treat some of the symptoms associated with cancer, but how the cannabinoids can inhibit tumor progression by themselves. No? So um, that was the subject of my PhD, and it's still a very active field of research in, in in some laboratories in the world, so I, I hope that I will be able to explain to you what we know so far. So, <clears throat> the, like the drugs against cancer have to like fulfill two requirements. They must work, obviously, they have to kill uh, cancer cells or to block the division of cancer cells. And, and, and the, on the other hand, if, if we want cannabinoids to work, we have to have the receptors, not for those for, for, for those molecules. On the other hand, they have, they can, they have to work, but they have to, to be safe at the same time. So they have to have, um, they, they cannot produce toxic effect, they have to be well tolerated, and, and, and ideally uh, the, the side effects that they produce have to be minimal. So do cannabinoids fill those requirements? Um, the, the, the effect of cannabinoids in cancer has uh, started to, I mean, was started to be studied in glioblastomas multiform, which is a very, very aggressive form of brain tumors. It's actually a devastating disease, and life expectancy with this disease is about a year only. And, and it's very sad because the treatment that we have so far in the clinic, which are mainly the surgery, where they take the, the tumor off, and some radiotherapy and chemotherapy, those treatments are only palliative, so they, there is no really cure for this, for this cancer. So the first observations that cannabinoids could uh, inhibit the progression of this cancer started actually by chance in the early, sorry, in the late 90s, when in Manuel Guzman laboratory, they observed that when they were treating cultures of glioma cells in, in culture, with THC, they actually kill uh, almost every cell, as you see there, no? I mean, you, we see that there are only few cells left with, which do not look very healthy. And years later, they could show in, in models of, in, if, in animal models of cancer, how <coughs> this uh, THC could actually reduce the size of the tumor. So, I mean, I, I'm going to try not to be very sciencey, so if it's too technical, please stop me and it's like, I don't understand anything and I will start, try to be clearer 
but for example, this is a mouse model. What, what, what we do is like to inject um, in the flank of the mouse glioma cells. And, and, you, and, and then the animals were treated or with vapor, which will be like the equivalent to the placebo in animals, or the TLC. So you can see how after a certain period of time, like the, the, the mice carrying the, the, the tumor, which have been treated with TLC, show much smaller um, tumors. And this is another model where the tumor cells were injected intracranially intracranially, sorry, to mimic what, I mean, to mimic the, the, actually the normal physiology of brain tumors, which actually happen in the brain, not in the side of a mouse. No? And, and then the, cannabis, the TLC was in this case administered intracranially. And actually after TLC treatment, the, the tumors actually uh, disappeared. And, and this work was published in 2000 in a very uh, prestigious uh, journal, which is called Nature Medicine. And it's important as well to explain that we know in the laboratory how cannabinoids act, uh, act like which, is the, which are the molecules or the signaling pathways which are activated in the cell and which lead to the, to the death. Um, it's, this is a technical name for control cell death, which is apoptosis. We know how the cannabinoids, after binding to the receptors, they activate certain um, signaling uh, cascades and, and lead to the to the to the um, to the death of the cancer cells, and this is very important for like designing if, uh, effective drugs, maybe in combination with other other inhibitors. And and I'm not going to go into detail, but basically what we have discovered is that cannabinoids, what they do is to switch off this molecule, is AKT, which is like a survival button in the cell. So if AKT is on in our cells the cells will survive and will be healthy. So if we switch off that survival button, uh, the cell will die. And, and basically most of the work in the lab has um, been, uh, at the end has concluded that, that most cannabinoids at the end switch off this pro-survival molecule. And I will now change the subject to breast cancer, which is maybe the, old, the other cancer which has been more extensively uh, studied in, in this field. And this was the subject of my PhD. Um, actually now, yeah, like some 10 years ago or a little bit more. So breast cancer is also a very prevalent disease. It's actually the, the most malignant disease in, in, the most common malignant disease in Western women. And although now the, the rates of curations are much better than some years ago, there is a still a significant proportion of breast cancer um, patients that do not, uh, I mean, that, that, sadly, that very uh, sadly died because of the disease, sometimes because of the metastasis or sometimes because they do not respond to the therapies. So there is a still a, a, an important need to, for developing new, new drugs in that field. And it's all a little bit complicated because can, breast cancer is not only one single disease, but it's composed by many different, like little diseases, depending on the proteins or of the markers that breast cancer cells express. So there is a, a subtype, I mean, I don't want you to keep, I mean, to know the details about it, but which is the HER2 positive breast cancers, where, where, which are the, the breast cancer subgroup where cannabinoid seems to be more effective. And it's important because those cancers express a protein in their membrane which is called HER2, and this is an oncogene. So if they express HER2, they will have like a, a, a lot of positive signals to, to divide in an uncontrolled manner. And, and even if there is a good drug in the clinic uh, called trastuzumab, which is an antibody which blocks the function of HER2, there is an important fraction of those patients which do not respond to trastuzumab or they acquire resistance, so they start by responding, the tumor at the beginning is sensible to this drug, but at the beginning is not anymore, and they develop like uh, recurrency. So the first observations that cannabinoid may be useful in, in these type of tumors come from this model, which is the MMTV new, new mouse model. So basically, this is a transgenic mouse where we have inserted uh, a gene, which is called new, which is like the uh, which is the, the rat version of the, of the HER2 oncogene in humans. So basically this mouse 
this mouse uh, will express this oncogene only in mammary cells to like make the story simple. So as a consequence of this, they will um, generate the spontaneous mammary tumors and also lung metastasis. This is the heart, this is one lung, another lung, and these like big uh, white bubbles are the lung metastasis. And they all develop tumors and, 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 and lung metastasis in an average time or of like 250 days, like less than a year. So uh, what we did was like to work with a huge group of animals and, and we were checking them every day for the appearance of tumors. And once a tum we could detect a tumor, we were treated uh, those animals with TLC peritumorally twice a week. And this treatment lasted for, for three months. What we observed, this is a graph which shows the growth of the tumor. No? So this is tumor volume, how big is the tumor uh, and during the time. So you can see like the very cold treated or placebo treated um, uh, tumors grow at this rate and how the tumors that were treated with THC grew much slower, like even like they, they were not growing at all at the beginning. And we were able not only to reduce the tumor growth, but also to reduce the number of tumors per mice, and also to, to be able to reduce the percentage of mice that develop lung metastasis. Um, this work, as I told you, was done in this model, uh, in this mouse model of, of HER2 positive cancer, but we have observed very similar observations in human cells derived from a HER2 positive cancer in, in from, from a human. So these are cells that are HER2 positive uh, cells that are grown in the lab and in, we treat them with um, not relatively high actually doses of THC. We can see how we uh, dramatically reduce the number of, of, of cells. And this was also true in, in vivo, in an animal model. So basically when we inject human cancer cells in a mouse, in the in a, in the in the size, and in this case, we give the the <coughs> drug orally, which is maybe a much more appropriate route of administration if we are thinking about the clinic. We can see how, in this case, the mouse that have been treated with TLC show like a very uh, diminished growth of the of the tumors. And, and on in breast cancer, we have also studied how is um, this. THC reducing uh, the cancer. No, what is, is it doing to the cells? So these little uh, red dots show us how the, the cells which are actively dividing in a tumor. So uh, you can see here how the tumors that have been treated with THC show less like red points. So this means that the, the number of cells which are actively dividing is decreased. And also the number of cells, in this case, the red dots are marking the cells which are dying. So after TSC treatment, the number of cells which are actually dying is also increased. And also, we have a decrease in the number of blood vessels. So angiogenesis is the, the technical word that we use for the formation of blood vessels. And this is important because if the tumor wants to grow beyond a certain limit, it needs supply of oxygen and nutrient supply. So it needs blood vessels uh, to be newly created inside the tumor. So in here, in green, we can see the, the blood vessels are marked, and we could see how, by counting the number of blood vessels, how THC treatment decreased uh, this formation of new, of new blood vessels. And as I was mentioning at the beginning, for cannabinoids to work, they have to, to kill cancer cells, but they have to target something specifically in the cell. So do we have, do cancer cells have cannabinoid receptors? So, in general, like uh, most observation are in, uh, sh have shown that cancer cells show much more, I mean, much higher levels of cannabinoid receptors than the corresponding healthy cells. So for example, the normal breast do not ac actually express very high levels of CD1 or CD2, but the expression of CD2 in a breast cancer increases really a lot. So we investigated about, I don't remember now the name, but more than the number by more than 500 patients, um, uh, breast cancer patients, and most of them express uh, CB2, which 
is important, as, uh, as Professor Hannes was saying. I, I will explain to you later why is this important. And we observed that the expression of CB2 was very correlated with the status of HER2. What I mean, like the tumors that were HER2 positive show higher levels of CB2 than other tumors. And this is important and it's and, and is going in the same directions to the data I was showing, showing you before, that perhaps this subset of breast cancer is the one which is going to be the most sensitive to, to cannabinoid treatments. So um, I hope I've shown you that cannabinoids may work and may be good anti-tumoral agents, but now we have to like really uh, see if they would be safe or not. Um, and, and it's true that um, if we want them to be safe, we would like to avoid, if possible, like all the, the psychotropic or side effects. So as, as Professor Hanut was mentioning, CB2, the, this uh, second cannabinoid receptor, is not expressing the central nervous system, but it's very highly expressing cancer. So when we studied this model of breast cancer, we also treated the, the mice with, a, with a, a synthetic cannabinoid, which is called JWH133, which only binds to CB2. It doesn't bind to CB1. And we observe very similar, um, sorry, very similar effects to the one observed by THC. In another experiment, what we did was to treat the mouse with Baycol or with THC and also with SR2, which is a, a, an antagonist of the CB2 receptor. Which I, what I mean is that in this case, we were blocking CB2 receptors, so THC was not maybe able to bind to this receptor anymore. And we couldn't observe any effect on the, on the, on the growth of the tumor, suggesting that THC in breast cancer at least, is exerting his anti-tumoral actions through activation of CB2, not CB1. And this is important because if we actually only target CB2, we, we will um, prevent all the maybe undesired side effects that cannabinoids may have in the central nervous system. And also, as Professor Hanus pointed, there is another very important molecule, which is called cannabidiol, CBD, which actually shows up the same effect uh, than THC in the human breast cancer cells. So it actually reduces the number of cells in a very effective way as well. And, and when it was administered to mice, uh, also orally, it showed a very similar potency to THC. This is important because cannabi cannabidiol has shown to, ha to have, apart from this antitumoral activity, other positive um, like effects as, for example, this prevention or modulation of the activity of other cannabinoids. <coughs> And also, we know that cannabinoids are safe. I mean, I don't know if you know this web page. It's like a database for, for clinical trials all around the world. And for example, if we type here Sativex, Marinol, Cannabidiol, we can see that so far they have, they are, there are more than 500 clinical trials with these compounds that have been completed and that have proven that, that cannabinoids are, can be safely administered to humans in a very in a, in a controlled way. So, so, I mean, this is maybe the first proof that, that, that cannabis administration is, is safe in, in, in human. So then, I think we, we, we know that cannabinoids work in, in cancer as anti-tumoral agent in preclinical models of cancer, which is like cells that we culture in the lab and mouse models, and we know that they are safe. But if we really want them to be in the clinic to treat cancer patients, what do we need to do? And and I mean, we need to do clinical trials, no? So as, as, as they were mentioning, we need to like make a huge effort to really push the clinical trials that we are interested in. Because so far, there is, even if there is a huge ev experimental evidence that cannabinoids may work in cancer, there are few clinical trials that have been done. The first pilot clinical study was done by Manuel Guzman group in, com in, in collaboration with a hospital in Canary Island in Spain, and it was finished like, um, now it's like 10, 10 years ago already. And it's a very small uh, clinical trial, phase one, which enrolled only nine patients with um, glioblastoma multiform uh, in a very, very advanced stage. So they were patients that had already relapsed 
and that they do not they did did not respond to the conventional treatments. Com uh, yeah. So basically, the primary endpoint of this study, as it involves so many, I mean, so little number of patients, it was to to evaluate the safety and life quality after THC administration. But the secondary endpoints, uh, they could um, like quantify or or study if the cannabinoids had any effect on the survival, on the tumor growth, and, and on tumor markers on, on some of those patients. So this was basically how the study was done. Um, as you see here, all the patients were diagnosed with glioblastoma multiform. They had a first surgery to extract the tumor, to resect the tumor, and they were treated with the conventional therapies, which is radiotherapy and chemotherapy, mainly temozolamide. Then sadly, they record, so this means that the tumor appeared again, and then they had a second surgery when a catheter uh, was inserted in the brain um, for THC to be administered inside the tumor. And the, the tumor was then removed again in, in this second surgery. So then they have THC treatment for a very variable uh, actually time, depending on the patient, and in some cases we could uh, take like post-treatment biopsies to analyze what happened with the tumor after THC. And, sadly, and, and, and very sadly, as, as this, this is, is a devastating disease, like all patients died after a particular a, 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 a period of time. So that, like the main conclusion of this, of this work was that THC didn't produce any psychotropic effect, even if it was administered really inside the tumor and inside the brain. In some cases, we could see that THC reduced tumor growth. Um, it increased the length of survival in, in some patients. And, and as I told you, we have to take into account that they were, those cases were already very dramatic cases. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, we were able to, to, to take a post-treatment sample in two of the patients. So in this case, we can analyze the sample pre-treatment with THC and post-treatment. And we observed that that THC was activating or inhibiting the same process that we had already observed in the laboratory with the animal models. So basically, it reduced cell proliferation. So the, the, here, the yellow dots are, are the cells which are actively dividing. So you can see that the number is reduced after THC treatment. It also increased the cells which are dying, the, the cancer cells which are dying, and those are the little um, brown dots. And it also reduced the formation of blood vessels in the, um, in the, in the tumor. So even if this is to the, uh, like was only including very uh, limited number of patients, I think the, the consequences are, I mean, the conclusions we took from there are, I think, positive and, uh, and I think are a hope for, for, the, for the establishment of future clinical trials. And so far, there are actually other two clinical trials which are taking place now. Unfortunately, I cannot say anything about this because the results are not published and I don't really know anything about them. But there is one uh, managed by the UK, by J JW Pharmaceuticals, which, which they are, in which they are studying the effect of Sativex in combination with temozolamide which is the main chemotherapy uh, drug which is given to, uh, to glioblastoma patients. And they mm, plan to enroll 20 patients. I don't know actually which is the final number of patients they enrolled. And they want to, to address the safety uh, in patients, if it's safe or not, to, for, for these patients to be treated with this combination of drugs. And as secondary endpoints, they will analyze as well the survival of the patients and the, the, the cancer progression. And there is another clinical trial happening in Israel, so maybe Professor Hannes knows a bit about it. I don't really uh, have much information about it. Which is aimed at studying the role of cannabidiol as a single agent for solid tumors. So I don't have many much more details about it. But hopefully in maybe next year we can have some, some um, already like some results. So as you see, like even if cannabinoids seem to work in the laboratory, there is few, very little evidence in the clinic. So I think we, we I mean, I, I think I have been showing you that they work, that they are safe, 
and that they have a, additional advantages because they have already been accepted to treat some of the of the side symptoms associated to cancer, no? Because they are good for the treatment of this oncologic pain, and they can also inhibit the nausea and the vomiting associated to chemotherapy. But I, but I, I mean, as we saw here, they can actually reduce the tumor in in some cases. So the next step, I mean, my my personal point of view here is that. We need, of course, more, more laboratory work, and we need to work in, in other cancers and, in, and to do more experiments, but that we need more clinical trials. So we need to convince pharmaceutical companies or maybe like to join efforts between medical doctors and, and researchers and all to really transmit the messages that we need these, three, these clinical trials to be done. So, so I think I'm going to finish here and and open my time of questions. I would like to thank uh, Manuel Guzman Group, which is the group where I did my PhD, and all my collaborators there. Also, I'd like to thank the group in Biodonostia, with, uh, with the, the people where, which I work with now. And this is a picture of the amazing city where I live now, as in San Sebastián, Spain, as you see, it's beautiful. And also, I would like to thank the, the, like the funding agencies who have supported our work in the lab. And thank you very much as well to cancer patients because without them we could not have done this research. And also, it, it, I mean, they are like giving the motivation to me to work. And, and also thanking very much you for your attention. Thank you.